Good morning, my name is Matthew from Axel and today I'm making a video to show connecting various USB peripherals to a Windows 2012 server using RemoteFX redirection from a thin client terminal. So I have here a Model 80, but what I'm talking about here applies equally to Model 80, Model 85 and Model 90 terminals. So the first step is to enable the RemoteFX redirection. Uh, enter Setup, Control, Alt, Escape, Terminal, Global RDP ICA, eligible devices, and I will set them all to yes. At this point you can limit it so only certain types of devices are redirected, but I'm going to enable all of them. The second step is within Sessions, Session 1, down the bottom, Redirected Resources, set USB ports, remote effects, set that to yes. That is the configuring done. You can use an RDP connection to connect to the server and still use USB remote FX redirection. So we're now connected. I will go to the control panel, hardware, devices, and connect some devices. So first of all, I'll use a 64 gig XFAT formatted memory stick. And Without any further ado, it pops up, and if I go into Explorer, Computer, and do a properties on it, we can see it's formatted to XFAT. Uh, note that using the legacy storage redirection, you can only redirect FAT32 formatted devices. Using this method, you can use NTFS or XFAT devices. The next device I'll connect is a standard Microsoft webcam and if I fire up VLC go into media open capture device video device name Microsoft live cam play play and play then here's a live feed of the road outside the next device I'll connect is a Topaz signature pad. Now this signature pad, it, is, it has a USB connector on it, but it has a serial to USB converter internal to the device. So it is seen as a serial device and it's popped up as this FT232 USB UART. Uh, now the the standard Windows 2012 server does not have a driver for this, so we get the exclamation mark as here, and currently the device won't work. I've already downloaded the drivers for this device. I'll quickly load them up. Okay, so now the drivers are loaded and the exclamation mark is gone, so that device is now, now working. Okay, the next device I'll connect, well I have an, a, a USB audio converter here, I'll plug that in, then again it's popped up, the black symbol here just means that the server is configuring itself, it's now configured. And the final device I'll connect uh, does not work, and I'll show you what happens when things don't work and what you can do to try to see why they're not working. Um, so here you go, so this is a Epson flatbed scanner. If I connect it, it does pop up as a scanner and we get the exclamation mark again, which means driver's not installed. I have downloaded the Epson drivers So the device has now appeared down here. It's prompting to restart. Okay, we've rebooted. I'll re-log on. I have set the terminal to automatically connect using administrator, so to speed things up. Right, we're going to desktop, control panel, hardware, devices. We now see the scanner here. There's no exclamation mark, so you think everything is okay. 
but if I click on the scanner app I get an error message. The things you can do uh, if you get this situation with other peripherals is go into diagnostics USB and find the device and see if anything untowards appears in there. Uh, you should see USB redirection as the driver being used which is the case here. You can also press Control, Alt, Shift, I for information and the window pops up and down the bottom here USB port redirection should be in use. So what we can conclude from this is that the terminal is doing its job. It has recognized the device as an Epson V37 scanner. It has forwarded the correct details onto the terminal server. The terminal server has received those parameters. It knows it's a scanner. It's found the right picture for it. But the Epson driver is not able to actually contact that device. So the only further thing you can do which I have done, is to attach the scanner direct to the server to check that the driver does work locally, and it does. If you get to this point, then things are not looking good. All the terminal is doing is acting as a TCP pipe between the scanner and the server. So the terminal is not really playing an active role apart from establishing the pipe. So what goes in one end comes out the other end. Now, to take the proof one step further, this is now a, a, a PC, and if I open up the RDP connector and go into Options, Local Resources, and More, then down the bottom I've ticked Other Supported Remote FX USB Devices. So if I click on that and connect, and I'm connecting to the same Windows 2012 server, then this is now a pure Microsoft environment. Then if I click on the scanner application and select the scanner, I get the same error message, cannot communicate with the scanner. Make sure the scanner is on, which it is. So that uh, really proves uh, beyond any argument, a particular driver doesn't work over remote FX. So that really is all that we can do at this point in time. The next step would be to call Epson and get confirmation as to whether their scanners do work over remote FX redirection. Okay, the final product I'll connect. We get probably more requests about cameras than anything else. I don't have a USB camera, so I'll use my Android phone, uh, which will hopefully uh, prove the same point. I'll remove the scanner, connect the phone, and on my phone I have the normal message about connecting to M. TP connection, so I'll allow that. So here's my Galaxy S6 has appeared, and well, if I go into Explorer, here's my phone, so I'll be able to drag photographs of that without any problems. So I hope you found it interesting. If you have any questions, or have any comments about Epson and how to make them work, then please give me a call. The Epson scanner is an old scanner, I've had it four or five years. It is using the latest driver, um, so quite possibly later Epson scanners do work over this method. Uh, if we can offer any help, then please contact us at your local Axel office. Thank you very much, and bye for now.